Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and today I am doing the Makeup Book Tag. I wasn't tagged by anyone but I saw Joe from Joe the Great Bibliophile do this video and I really like the idea of it because I love both books and makeup. So um, she, though she didn't tag me she did encourage me to do this in the comments so hi Joe. So as you might know I am cheap. I love my books from charity shops and it will come as no surprise that I love my makeup from drugstores. So all of these products are from either British or German drugstores. Let's get started. First up is Primer. And the question for that is, pick a book that left a lasting impression on you. I don't actually use primer. So I usually just prime my face with my moisturizer, which is this one. It's a urea face cream from DM, which is a German drugstore and this is their store brand. It's really good. I have my mum send me this in bulk because it's the best moisturizer I've ever had and it's super cheap. It's under three euros. And the book that goes with it that left a lasting impression on me would have to be The Magician's House, the entire series, but I've got the first book here called The Steps Up the Chimney by William Corlett. I read this when I was 11 and I have childhood diaries filled with my thoughts on this book. It's a sort of magical adventure story, but it touches on some really important issues that influenced me a lot at that age. Hello, cats. I think I might have to lock them out for this, you know. They're currently having a chase around my office. Next is foundation. And the foundation I use is this uh, Bourgeois Healthy Mix Serum Foundation in the color 51 Light Vanilla. So I'm gonna apply this. Guys, I can't do makeup and talking about books. I'm not that good at multitasking, but we'll try. And I'm using this cheap drugstore Beauty Blender knockoff. So what was the question again? Oh, I, I haven't even mentioned the question yet. It's favorite first book in a series. Now, um, I don't actually... Okay, I'm gonna need a mirror for this. I'll be back in a moment with a mirror. Back with a mirror. Yes, yeah, so I don't read that many series because um, I mostly read adult literature and you don't get as many series in that. So a lot of these series-based questions are going to be answered with children and YA books that I read when I was younger. So my favourite first book in a series would have to be The Bad Beginning in the Lemony Snicket series. I think it's such a great book, it's really fun, and I just don't think that most of the other books in this 13-part series quite live up to that first exposition to this world. This foundation, by the way, is very, very sheer, so in this camera you probably won't even see a difference. I just like a very light coverage, sheer foundation, and this is pretty good. All right, next one. Concealer. Pick a character you wish didn't exist. Everyone in Wuthering Heights. And the concealer I'm using is the Rimmel Match Perfection Concealer. It's all right. I don't think I'll be buying it again. I think I'm still on the lookout for something slightly better. But again, I don't really use concealer all that often. Good thing about wearing glasses is you really do get away with um, wearing no concealer and little foundation. So, sorry for fans of Wuthering Heights. I know it's a very popular book, but I just don't see the appeal of Catherine and what's his name. However, the Kate Bush song is great. Okay, done with the concealer. Cat's still having a fight in the corner. Next up is Powder, which is favorite last book in a series. So I don't use powder much either because I prefer a sort of natural finish for the skin part. I need to go get my powder brush. I am so prepared for this. I know what I'm doing here. So the powder I'm using is uh, from the German 
sort of organic hippie cosmetics brand Alverde. And the brush is from DM uh, own brand. Again, that's that amazing German drugstore that I miss so much in the UK. So let's just put a little bit of power on there and talk about my favorite last book in the series. So I'm going to go with Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows here because it's one of my favorite Harry Potter books. Probably second after The Order of the Phoenix, although The Prisoner of Azkaban is also close to that. But I know a lot of people didn't like it because it's not set in the school and all of that, but I actually thought it was a really good ending to the story. I even liked the epilogue. It's just powder all over my desk now. Next up is eyebrows. Where? Where did I put my eyebrow pencil? It's there. Uh, this is the Professional Eyebrow Pencil by Rimmel and I like it because it is the exact shade of my eyebrows, which is black brown. And the question that goes with that is, pick a book everyone should read. So, I'm not a fan of universal book recommendations because people have different tastes, not just in terms of genre, but also in the sorts of books that appeal to them. But I think if there's one book that would appeal to a lot of people, it's another children's book, it would be The Giver. Look at this retro styled cover. This is also from a charity shop, of course. <sighs> Kitten. I think this would appeal to a lot of people because it's a very simple kind of dystopian story. And the message it carries is, again, quite simple and quite universal. And I don't know anyone who's read this book and not liked it. So this is something I would recommend to someone looking for book recommendations, especially if they don't normally read all that much. So the other eyebrow. I've just realised I'm really bad at doing my makeup at this angle. I don't normally do my makeup at my desk. Right. Let's try and fix that with the brush at the other end of this. Seriously, I don't know how Joe managed to talk about books and also did an actually amazing makeup look. I'm not going to be able to achieve that. All right. Well, their sisters and all that. Next is eyeshadow. I need to get my eyeshadow primer. For my eyeshadow primer, I use another German product, which is the Perfect Eyes Base by a German drugstore brand called P2. I think they might be discontinuing this or something, but I've got half a dozen stored up from the last time I went to Germany. So the eyeshadow question is my favourite colours on the cover. So my favourite colour is red. I think that colour is beautifully displayed on this book this edition of Shakespeare's Sonnets. This is a really beautiful, if slightly destroyed, cover that shows a kind of red quill or a feather and I really like how that looks. So for my eyeshadow I'm using some shades from the sleek palette called A New Day. Let's see if I can do the uh, beauty YouTuber thing and actually show you the colours. They really don't show up well on that webcam. Sleek palettes are my favourite eyeshadows. They are quite cheap. They're, um, I think, between 8 and £10 pounds for a 12 shadow palette. But the colours are so pigmented and the texture is so beautiful and soft. I just love them. They show up really well on the eye. And they're the only brand of eyeshadow that doesn't crease on my eyelids. So I'm going to start with this kind of very neutral tone that matches my eyelids which by the way I don't know if you can see that my eyelids are darker than the rest of my skin sometimes it looks like I'm wearing eyeshadow even though I'm not actually wearing eyeshadow and then after that I'm applying this really nice copper shade copper bronze guys this is why I'm not a makeup blogger the eyeshadow brush, again, is from Ibeline, which is the um, DM store brand. Oh, 
All right, my eyes are now very glittery indeed, but you can't see it on there. So I'm just going to go into the crease with the brown color in this. Blending brush also from DM. They really should sponsor me. And then I like to um, add a little bit of the dark eyeshadow under my eyes as well with this brush, also from DM. I think this is originally meant to be a lip brush, but seriously, who uses lip brushes? All right, so far so messy. Let's do the next step, which is eyeliner. And um, I don't often use like proper eyeliner. I try sometimes, but it takes me about three hours to get it right. And even then it's only bearable behind my glasses where you can't see how uneven it actually is. So I am just going to tight line and I left my eyeliner in the bedroom again. So back in a moment. So the eyeliner I use is from Essence, which is a European drugstore brand that you can find in the UK in Wilco's. And I think there is even a place that sells it in the US. Generally, Essence is sort of hit and miss, but all of their products are really cheap and I can highly recommend their lipsticks, blushes, mascaras, nail polishes. The eyeliner is okay, it's a bit hard, so it doesn't really melt that well into the, uh, into the lash line. Oh yeah, the question. Favourite dark and mysterious book? So my pick for this is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, here represented by this massive uh, complete edition of Oscar Wilde. It's a really beautiful book to read on a dark winter day. It's creepy and wonderful. All right, after that botched eyeliner job, I'm going to move on to mascara. And, oh, please. Did I really? I also just almost stepped on poor Beetle because I can't see without my glasses on. Anyway, the mascara I'm using is um, by Essence as well. And it's called the Maximum Definition Volume Mascara. My eyelashes are already quite long, so I don't really need anything that adds a huge amount of length or volume to them. But I like a bit of definition that this gives me. The question is, pick a long book. So I'm assuming this means a long book that you like, and not just any old long book. So the obvious one for me might be Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. But... For a bit of a change, I'm going to go for the book I'm currently reading, which is Villette by Charlotte Bronte. Doesn't look long, it's over 600 pages. The pages are like Bible pages, they're really thin, see-through in this edition. I started this two weeks ago, or last week, and I'm getting through it very slowly, because it demands a lot of attention from the reader. So I only managed to read around 20 pages at a time but I'm really enjoying it so far I'm not sure if I like it more than Jane Eyre but then Jane Eyre also takes a bit of time to get going so maybe it will be a bit more gripping in the second half of the book I can't believe I'm showing everyone my mascara face all right this is what my eyelashes look like now so we get to blush, which is pick a book with a cringe-worthy romance. Um, I don't tend to read that many romance-heavy books, and when I do, the romances tend to be quite good and not at all cringe-worthy. So the book I'm actually going to go for here is The Sign of Four by Arthur Conan Doyle. It's, I think, the second Sherlock Holmes novel. And it's the one where Dr. Watson meets his wife, who is barely even a character in that book, and then gets forgotten very soon after. So the romance is really kind of tacked on and just doesn't add much either to the book or to the character. And the female part of this couple, Mary Morstan, she is a shell of a human. She really doesn't have that much personality and it kind of bothers me that 
Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson are so well-rounded, you know, such beautiful characters, and then Conan Doyle couldn't be bothered to write a good female character to go with that. So that's a bit of a shame. All right, good thing about the lighting is you can't see how uneven my blush is. So we get to highlighter. Oh, there it is. So I don't use a highlighter for a highlighter. I use this loose eyeshadow, which I got on special offer for one euro. This is from Alverde, the aforementioned hip German hippie brand. And it's just a loose eyeshadow that's got a really nice sort of pink shimmery color to it, but it's not too shimmery. And the question that goes along with that is pick a book that brightens your day. So this one has to be I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. My favorite book of 2017. It is such a lovely read. I was thinking of reading it this month actually, but it's kind of a spring book and at the moment it's just cold outside. A brush still by Aveline. All of my brushes are from Aveline. Oh, that's not true. So <laughs> the the brush I used to apply the blush is actually from Real Techniques. That's the, I think their foundation brush, but I use it to apply blush. Okay, and then the last thing on the list is lipstick. And the question that goes along with this is your favorite book kiss. Again, I don't really read that much romance. I can't really think of a really memorable kiss, so I'm going to mention one that's not actually in the book, and that is from Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. You know the scene at the end where they all go for a walk, or is that just in the adaptation? Anyway, the scene at the end where Darcy and Elizabeth get together, um, let's just imagine that they have a beautiful kiss, even though Jane Austen forgot to actually write that in the book. So for lipstick, I've got two options here. They are both the Revlon Lip Butters, which sadly have been discontinued and I totally missed that they got discontinued because otherwise I would have stocked up on these. So the two colours I have are Pink Truffle and Red Velvet. I'm just looking at my eyes and I think I'm going to go for the Red Velvet one. Oh, I do love it so much. If you know any lipstick that is similar in texture to these uh, Revlon lip butters, so that is quite opaque in terms of colour but very well, as the word says, very buttery and kind of waxy um, on the lips. Please let me know because I'm looking for something to replace these with. Yeah, the, uh, the webcam makes it look a lot more pink than it actually is. So this is more of a warm brick red kind of colour. So what I might do now is uh, just take a selfie and then insert that at the end of the video so you can actually see in slightly better quality what my makeup looks like. This was the makeup and book tag. Thank you again for Jo for the encouragement and go check out her video if you want to see a well done makeup video and a well done, well done book tag video in one. Until next time, thank you for watching. Bye!